Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Spiritual Leader Podcast. <laughs> hey. Shelly, uh, last podcast, I noticed you were getting like 22 texts during the podcast. Yeah, yeah, podcast. sometimes that. Yeah, I was going to ask you during the thing if you wanted me to reply to your yeah, text you message because you were I, in I a little still, bit of a flow there. I still haven't even looked at them. I don't uh, know what they are. Yeah. Hey, uh, and you wonder why. I, when was your daughter? <laughs> oh, she was texting you? Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, you know, very natural. I don't even nap- know what that is. <laughs> tennis is that shoes. food? It was oh, tennis hocus. shoes. <laughs> uh, what's a hoka? I thought it was a food or something. Is uh, that hummus? Or, hummus, or, yes. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway. Uh, moving right along. Talking about being a Let's spirit. Let's get out of the flesh <laughs> and into the spirit. No, Shelly, in all seriousness. Oh, by the way, here's Shelly back with us. Uh, another Spiritual Leader podcast. We were, there were some sparks flying last week on that podcast, man. I felt like. Gosh, there was like just stuff popping. Yeah. It, when it dawns on the Christian, you know, like Kenneth Hagin used to say this all the time, if it ever dawns on the believer mm. who they are and what they have yeah, yeah, yeah. in Christ, yeah. uh, the authority they have, mm. you know, et cetera. And we just kind of gotten into this thing, just picking up where Laura and I have been kind of going on this subject line of walking in the spirit. But you kind of just took it back a little bit you know, from the, the very book, the beginning, yeah, yeah. Genesis, you know, Adam was a spirit, et cetera. Um, but I just wanted to reemphasize something real quick, and then we'll get back to you know, what you got. Um, on that little kind of vision thing that I was sharing last week, it, I just feel like it bears repetition uh, because it showed, like, the Lord showed me the difference, mm. the, the potential and power uh, or the differences between living a life limited to just our mind, will, and emotions, Mm -hmm. and our body, uh, compared to living a life of walking in the spirit. And I said last week in the podcast, you know, it's this little dinky travel trailer, Mm -hmm. you know, all run down, 100 years old, whatever. And compared to a lavish, like, uh, something you'd see in England, like one of the estates, you know, that the crown, you know, owns and operates, just lavish mansions and lush green, you know, whatever, hillsides and rivers running through it and just abundance everywhere you look. And the Lord basically spoke to me in that little time in prayer and said, this is the difference between living in the soul, only relying on your mind, will, and emotions or your body or or both versus stepping into who you really are, uh, a spirit. And, And not just a spirit, but a born again spirit Mm -hmm. so now we have this entire realm of the Mm -hmm. spirit the spiritual realm at our disposal is not a good word but we can access and live from that realm but it's going to take us stepping into and living a life in the spirit right you know we talk about renewing our mind and we think that that means just what we're thinking on in fact we we talked to the the students the youth group last night, Sunday night, uh, about this. And um, when you're renewing your mind, it's not just about what you're thinking about. It's actually the mindset in which you live. Oh, God, and this so good. is, so, is so good. what Paul is talking about when he says you need to renew mm. your mind, transform yourself by the renewing of your mind, not just to not have a bad thought. That's, I mean, that's just scratching the surface. If I can just change my... That's the defensive side yeah, of it. Yeah, that, exactly. <laughs> you know, just so I don't feel bitterness against, you know, my cousin, I'm going to think on loving thoughts and not how I want to punch her in the face or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, that's where the church is at. Can I just replace this bad thought with a good thought? But he actually meant to actually change the way your mind processes things, the way that you live. And this is Jeez. one of the things that needs to change and and you know the reason that that example that you give is is so powerful because it's the way that the devil wants us to live uh, every college uh, uh, bases their educational system off of it is keeping you a two-part being and if the devil can keep you thinking i am only in these two realms and i can only function in these two realms out of my mind and you know what your mind is is pretty good your mind can can excel at many things and learn many things but it's it's not the end all and it's not that great uh and and your emotions you you know what they're there to serve you but if that's the only part of you your soul and your mind that you live out of you never 
ever recognize that you are a spirit, then the devil has you trapped in the realm in which you're he inferior. Can control. You're inferior Absolutely. to him. There, there, you can't compete. You can't. We can't do anything yeah. good from yeah. those two realms. No. On the the, you could see in what you're saying though with the mind and body. Look at all mm-hmm. the confusion in the world. Yeah, today. it's so, and, and that's where they're it's kept. All motion. Even Christians. Well, I mean, we don't even know. People don't even know who they are. Right. We right. don't know what gender we are. Right, there is right. all this confusion which is let me tell you right here i do want to ask you this though on when you said last week and we can jump back into this Mm -mm. wherever you left off adam god breathed the breath of life into adam yeah he came alive he became a living being right Mm -hmm. spirit Mm -hmm. spiritual life the life of god went into adam he came alive you know on uh, james says the the body without the spirit is dead right so the 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 life of the body is spirit well, why don't we see this like we should? But Adam was creating God, God's image. He had the life of God. When he sinned, which I looked up recently, some they say Adam lived anywhere from 33 years to like 130 years before right, right, he sinned, before, before yeah. he fell. But when he fell, mm-hmm. when Adam and Eve sinned, the Bible basically describes that, that spiritual mm-hmm. life of God's nature that was in them left them. Yeah. So, but here, here's my question. They're still spirit beings. Yeah. So do they have, we read and saw it in the New Testament where Jesus said to the Pharisees or Sadducees, you're of your father, the devil. Yeah. So in that spiritual nature now that we as fallen men or fallen men have, it's still a spiritual nature. It's just, mm-hmm. is it, the nature of, we say, death, the realm of death, the, the nature of darkness, the devil. Because he we, said, you're of your father, the devil, yeah. which means we're, we have s- the same the same way we say God is our father is the same way Jesus said the devil is your father. Right, right. Which it's, means it's the, one same, or the, other. the stuff that makes the devil the devil is in you as a fallen man. Right, right, right. And then right. the stuff that makes God God is in me as right, a right, born-again right, man. Right. But what is it? We're not, it's, it's different, because I remember living in sin. Yeah. I remember being a fallen man and right. living under the devil being my father, spiritual father. But it wasn't like, it's different. I wasn't led by the spirit. It almost like the spiritual part of me was cut off, mm-hmm. in a sense. Mm-hmm. And then I really was just relying on my soul and my body. Mm-hmm. So is it that, is the nature of spiritual death, like, just that I don't have access to God's life? Or is it? Is there some other sinful thing that's working in there? It's got to be a nature. Well, it, it, I, I for sure it, it is because you know people think that you're born good and you learn to do bad. No, you're born bad. <laughs> We're born into sin. <laughs> yes, you said last week. Right, yeah. and that's your nature. And so you you no matter you can try to get you know even at two years old you can have good disciplinary parents and you can learn not to slap your sister to take the toy you know what i mean but all it's kind of like that story of the kid who they get on to him and they're like sit down sit down sit down and he says i may be sitting down on the outside but i'm standing up on the inside you know that that nature is in you and so you may think well these decisions are are you know i'm making them solely out of my mind or out of my emotions but you're just really dead to god like you there is no you're godless you could say yeah, you're godless a- absolutely right? absolutely you, I, good people in the world that are not born again they're godless yes absolutely but they you said it they can operate in good morals right uh, in, in even ethics right but they're still dead to god Right. In Ephesians, it tells us, uh, I don't remember, I think it's Ephesians 4, uh, let's see, 17 maybe, 17 and 18, let's just see. Sometimes, uh, walk not as the Gentiles uh, walk. In this the nature, I say, therefore, yeah. and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their minds, having wow. their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God wow. because of the <laughs> ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. It, it, 
I mean, that's what the you're Holy talking Spirit about. The Holy Spirit got it, nailed it on the head on that one. <laughs> he helped us understand. Yeah. And really, if you, it, it's even so, so you, you say keep it again. Reading my there, gosh, that, this, that describes man exactly, without God. Really. Absolutely, absolutely. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles, meaning those who are outside not, of God, yep, outside of God. Uh, rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. No wonder Paul prayed in Ephesians 1 that I pray uh, that the Lord would give unto you a spirit of wisdom and in revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened, right? Why? Because it, it being not oh born again, the, your eyes of your understanding are darkened. Why? Because of your ignorance of the blindness of your You're just heart, not seeing it. Right? You're basically You're describing there, there, there's an entire world out there that has no idea right. that this is happening. Right, right. I mean, they, they have no idea that they're separated from and the life of God. And that's why Jesus said, <clears throat> how will they know unless they hear? And how will they hear unless someone, you know, speaks? And how will they, you know, unless somebody's sent? Because it is, which goes into a whole other aspect of, of living this Christian life, but people are just deceived. People are deceived born again, and people are deceived not born again. It's all deception of the enemy, and he wants to keep you in a place. As a Christian, we talked about it last last, uh, uh, week, podcast, and we said that, uh, you know, um, Sometimes I have 17 thoughts going on in my mind. Yeah. And, and this, you lose <laughs> one every now and then. You lose yeah. one. I, I just lost that we one. We talked about it, will, it last come back. week. We talked the, about it last week, but I forgot even the, the realm of it. It'll come back to you. It always does. Yes. So, you know, we have to get better at not only recognizing we're a spirit. That's the first That's the first. Uh, 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 point. That's the, that's the first thing you can do is walk Wait. around in this life saying, I am a spirit. Pointless or uselessness. That's amazing. That word you just used. Yeah. The futility of, of their your mind. The pointlessness and uselessness. Oh, that's good. <laughs> From that, I just looked that up, the word futility. Yeah. Because it says... It, you, that's uh, what we're stuck in. We're the stuck Gentiles in a pointlessness are walking. or uselessness. Which is just out of order. on this. At that out of order is useless. A toilet's not, you are a spirit. You're just out of order. You're of no use. It's pointless. That's how they walked. Can I just, can we just, we're going to summarize this podcast right now. I just want to stand up and I'm going to tell Shelly and I, let's just walk in the spirit. Right. Let, and, and we need to hear some things on yeah. here on how do we get walking, walk, walk in the spirit. Right. The answer is right in front of us, obviously. And it's in scripture. The Holy Spirit's going to lead us into this. But if we don't catch this, we're, we're stuck to a life of operating in the futility of our mind. Yeah. Like the, the, the pointlessness or uselessness. Yeah. We are so far below what God intended for us to walk in when we're not walking in the spirit, walking yes. in his realm. But right. we, I want to just say, just make a decision like we're coming up like you said it we need to be better at being spirits the lord said to you yes need to become better at being a spirit go ahead it's absolutely true i i've got just here because the lord said that to me and so i don't just take what the lord says and just try to well i'll just try to get better at that the only way i'm going to get better at it is practicing it I, i played sports you played sports i've done many things in my life and some things i had to i needed to get better in and the only way i got better at it was intentionally focusing on that yeah like the and repetition so, too. yes and, and so in this keep doing it. the reason you've spent weeks yeah. on this subject is because your life won't change until you get better at this right i so i've got look at this you can see it all of these scriptures in the new testament that help me understand that it, man they're is all a spirit. on man is a spirit yes having a, a, a it, they're, they're having that man is a spirit, I have a soul, and I live in a body. And and just There's a to, bunch of scriptures on that That's list. a bunch of scriptures. Yeah. Like, it yeah. goes all the way, literally starts in Matthew. Matthew 26, 40 through 41, and goes all the way through the New Testament. And so, um, you know, you, you got to understand that your body is literally only a house. To be alive in this earth, saved or unsaved, your spirit needs a house. That's why, because see, we're That's spiritual That's keeping beings. your spirit on the ground. That's why demonic <laughs> demons are looking for somebody to enter, because they need a house to operate in. 
right? So this body, you know, when somebody's possessed and they're, I'm not trying to get over into something weird or whatever. I'm just saying that is a realm of the spirit that we just have closed our mind off to when that's, that's actually the realm that we're, you know, this body just keeps us on this earth. When this earth passes We're called away, to that other realm is right, what you're saying. It's yes. that realm. And and we know that that realm operates and even on the other side they need a house is all, all I'm saying. And so we can rid ourselves from not having any demonic influences in our house, right? Doesn't change the fact that we are a spirit. We just have to get good at living out of this realm. You know, Paul, that's why Paul, I mean he wrote that Ephesians 4 Three chapters over, he wrote the Ephesians 1 that we kind of yeah. just quoted. Yeah, prayer, and right. I want to say this, that in that prayer that Paul prayed, this says, uh, uh, you know, I pray that your eyes of understanding uh, would be enlightened, right? He is basically praying. Paul is saying that you don't, if you don't know who you are in Christ, because he's talking to the church, the, the, the Ephesians. Uh, the, the church at Ephesus, yeah, right? Yeah. So he's talking to Christians and he's saying, I pray that your eyes would be open. Why are we doing this podcast? Because he's not saying your your eyes are not open. In, in Ephesians 4, he is saying, don't live. You as a Christian who have a born-again spirit alive into God, God. don't live as the Gentiles live. Uh, so there's which means you a, can. You can. Yeah. They, and they were. So he's uh, saying, listen, you don't have to live blind in the futility these of your in mind. In the pointlessness, in uh. the uselessness of these things. He's saying, so you, Christian... Why do we do this podcast eight weeks in a row? Uh, uh, you, Christian, me, Christian, don't live as the world, as someone unsaved lives wow. in the futility of their mind, in the pointless uselessness of their mind, having their understanding. So that means that my understanding, not walking in the reality Jeez. of the truth of this, that my understanding is darkened as if I am alienated. I am living as if I'm alienated from the life of God. So as a Christian, this My what did we God. say at the beginning of this? The devil wants you living in the realm over here without accessing yeah. who you really, the realm of the, the supernatural, the, the spiritual realm. Because that you, vision... wants to keep you limited to that natural realm. And that's your that, that knowing example. Knowing you not knowing that you're a spirit and have access to the fullness of God. You will never God. access the things of God, which is the vision or the example that's you the gave us. That's the devil's dream come true there. Absolutely. Churches and filled with people that have no knowledge that they are a spirit in Christ and right, have access right. to God's realm. So basically Paul is telling us, Jesus. says that if you don't know who you are in Christ, because that's what he's saying, you don't know it, so you're living like you don't know it, even though you're born again. Uh, so if you live as and not knowing who you are in Christ and what your inheritance is, and the only way you're going to access that is through the spirit, you don't know the things of God or Jesus Christ until your spirit sees it, right? Yeah. Uh, because it's your reborn spirit that knows and contacts and understands the things of God. This leads to understand how Paul uses the word knowledge. Mm. He means more than a head knowledge. And so many people sit in church and hear a message, wow. listen to a podcast like this, and you process it with your mind. Mm. But you know what? We've listened to thousands of hours of sermons and the Word of God, and we've only processed it with our mind. We've got to it learn became just differently. Intellectual it's just information. intellectual yeah. information. And the reason it doesn't work is because you're still not processing it. It's not revelation, which doesn't come from your natural senses. It comes out of your spirit. It's revelation knowledge, oh right? God. So Paul uses the word knowledge. He means more than head knowledge. He means heart knowledge, not sense, uh, not sense knowledge uh, that comes from your senses either uh, into your head, but revelation knowledge that comes into your spirit through the word of God. Uh, in Ephesians 3, verse 16 through 18, he prays that they would be strengthened in might by his spirit in the in inner, inner man, man, that they may be able, they got to be strengthened in yeah. their spirit so yeah. that they're able to comprehend, yeah. right? Yeah. The spirit dimension and the love of Christ. Glory to God. This Paul spent a lot of time talking on these things so because good. he wanted us first step is realizing you are a spirit. And then 
then that opens up uh, the fact that there's a spiritual realm. I love that how you just said that. The first step yes. is realizing you, you, are you are a spirit being. Right. And that's that was the beginning for me. Yes, that's yes. what opened it up. Wait a minute. I'm something different than this and this? Right, right. Like my whole life, I only in school was, had this developed and my body developed. Right. Everything in the world is develop your intelligence right. and your physical or outward right, appearance. Right. Nothing ever about here. No. So no. that is, for me, was step one. I am a spirit. Right. So now what do I do with that, you know, yes. going into that? And, and, it's, and then you become very aware that if I am a spirit, this world is not my home. I'm from another realm, yeah. then there is, and that realm holds everything that Christ has done for me, then I've got to learn how to live in that realm. Glory and as God. a spirit, I'm able to. As a spirit, I'm not bound to this world, even though my house is my body, mm. my body doesn't get to dictate that I can only receive from this realm. Because my spirit supersedes all that wow. my mind wants to contain and tap me to, Glory or that to my God. body wants to uh, hold me to. My spirit can access another realm. Yeah. So I recognize first I am a spirit, and then everything that I am dealing with, I need to learn how to deal with that from this realm yeah. and not this realm. Yeah, yeah, from your, from this, your spirit, from spirit in access right. with God's realm. So you're basically saying walking in the spirit is learning how to live and respond to life from in here. Right. From your spirit, right. which is where God lives. Yes, I, I, I made this example. Walking in the spirit. Yes, I made this example, um, and I know that uh, we're almost out of time, but uh, to, to students the other day, and it was uh, specifically about renewing your mind, but it, it, I, I think it bears uh, truth here. If you walk in a room, and, it, and it's, it's true for most teenagers and most adults, I walk in the room and there's a bunch of kids sitting over in the corner, and I walk in and I see these kids look at me and then start laughing. My mind wants to go, they don't like me. They're making fun of me. Now, I told them the example, like, what if they were telling a story about something that happened at one of their houses, and they just start laughing and happen to look over there, telling the story that's unrelated to you, doesn't even include you. They laugh, but what is it? Living in this realm causes you to think things that aren't even true causes you to live and fight things that you never should have to fight because you're living out of what your mind can comprehend. Dude, you want to hear something powerful? I, I always make... I sh I love small little things, you mm -hmm. know, like little, just little things God shows us in these things. But yesterday we were leaving church mm -hmm. at an event here and I went to go get in my car to leave, to go home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the event was ending and most people had gone and I go to go to my car and all of a sudden I have a check mm. in here mm -hmm. that says, just hold off for a minute. Like just, it wasn't anything like lightning right, bolts right, right. are flying around, angels are flying around. I just had an impression here, just wait. It wasn't here. Matter of fact, up here was trying to override this and I wanted to go home because it had been a long morning, et cetera. So I yield to this and within probably three or four minutes of that happening, I'm walking back in the building and I run across the guy who I had missed in the service and I went to say hello to him and I look up and see him, look at his face and I'm like, I know this guy. And we had not seen each other for 30 years. Huh. We ended up talking just about the things of God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was just a good connection there. And I thought, that's why the Holy Spirit in here yeah, said, yeah, yeah. what is that? That's walking in the Spirit. Right, It right. just doesn't get any more complicated right, than that. Right, I yielded to an impression in here, the Holy Spirit wanted me to connect with that gentleman. Yeah. And, and, and talk and, and get re reacquainted, et cetera. After him and I were done talking, in my spirit, I knew I can go home now. Right. What is that? My my mind was telling me, this is, I don't need to do this. Right. But in here, it's, it's, it's so it It's so powerful. And you have to understand, and, and we can close with this, uh, this is the first step, recognizing your spirit. Because when you get over into identification with Christ, what Christ has done for me, my stuff... Without understanding that you're a spirit, you can't make the leap 
like with Paul, I was crucified with Christ because no. Paul wasn't there. Paul wasn't even in the vicinity mm. of when, when Christ was crucified. Yet Paul made the statement, I was crucified. So to go and possess and walk in everything that you have, this aspect, uh, this single aspect of, of being a spirit uh, is so interwoven through everything that Christ has done Testament, for you in, in all of Paul's from writings. Genesis to in Revelation. The, all of it. Genesis and, to Revelation. And a failure to recognize this will keep you from grasping everything that Christ has given to you and done for you. I wish, this I, is the absolute truth. I wish we could do another podcast. You know, Maybe <laughs> maybe when you're back we'll in, bring a, it in back. a week or two, we'll do another. But gosh, Shelly, I, 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 I know we're trying to end. Hopefully we don't run out of tape. But the... Uh, on the first or second Corinthians where it says these things are spiritually discerned. Yeah, Everything yeah. that God's done for us in Christ is mm. spiritual. It yeah. specifically says the natural man right. receives not Nothing. the things of God. You yeah. can't here and here. We cannot receive. It's got to be here. Right. And that's the whole thing with if we're underperforming as Christians, it's just one simple reality. Right, right. We just right. haven't learned how to walk in the spirit. Yeah. That's all there is to it. You talk about a key. This is the key that unlocks the whole thing. Yeah. Man absolutely. is a spirit. Listen, Shelly and I love you. We're praying for you. Believe in God for awesome things to uh, take place and happen in your life. Uh, until next time, we'll see you real soon. God bless. Yeah.